sensitivity analysis. <coughs> sensitivity analysis is used to determine how cash flows may vary with changes in the underlying assumptions. What happens if the prices were to increase? What happens if the uh, financing structure is to change? So sensitivity analysis is a what if technique. Now, first you compute the NPV IRR on expected cash flows. Then you change the key assumptions, but one at a time, not all together, one at a time, and see the NPV and IRR uh, again. Thus, forecasts of several NPVs and the various assumptions are compared to see how sensitive is. We have arrived at a certain NPV, but does it mean that a small change in, in the financing option, in the raw price of the raw materials, in the discount factor, it will have a huge impact on the NPV. So this might bring to light some, some things, you know, we may not be able to identify the risk at the first glance, but this also, this method of sensitivity analysis may also help us to realize projects which we which are kind of riskier. Some of the questions just to understand. Say the discount rate changes from 8 to 10 percent. What would be the impact on the NPV? How sensitive is the NPV to the change in the discount rate? Or what is the impact on the NPV if the project is extended for two more years? If you extend it for two more years, maybe there are more maintenance costs. What will happen if cash flow decreases by 10% each year? How much is your NPV going to change? What happens if there are no cash flows in a particular year? What happens if the additional capital investment is required during the life of the project? All of these are some of the questions which may be asked. Let us take a small example, students. Two projects, they have the same initial investment and a project life of three years. They yield total cash inflows of 100,000 each as well. Project A, 40, 30, 30, year 1, year 2, year 3. Project B, 10, 30, 60. Project C, 10, 10 and 80. Actually, all of them yield 100, uh, 100,000, yes or no, as a total. Uh, but but then the timings are kind of different. Now, what is the impact on NPV if the discount factor changes from 10 to 12%? Not two projects, right? So this is a three projects. What do you say? Yeah. So, let's <coughs> Uh, here 1, 2, 3, discount factor 10%, project B also at 10%, so 40, 30, take the discount factor, multiply, you are getting discounted cash flows of 83, 696, 78, 963 and 77, 261. These are your uh, cash flows, okay. Uh, if you take 12%, uh, now again you see, you will obviously get, uh, each of these will be slightly lower, that was 10% discount rate, this is 12% discount rate. And of course both the situations you prefer project A with a higher NPV, right? Uh, this is because there is a greater cash flow here in the first year of 40,000, right? Here it's only 10,000 and 10,000 in the other two projects. Now. <clears throat> The thing is, it has changed from 10 to 12, correct? Therefore, there is a change in NPV. Naturally, there will be a change. We are just looking at what is the difference in the change. If you see, this is 3%, this is 4%, and there is a 5% change in uh, NPV due to a rate, due to a change in the discount rate in case of Project C. So, Project C is the most sensitive to a change in the uh, change in the uh, discount rate. This is largely because it has a huge cash flow at the end of year three. So that gets hit most. Well, just to do this is just one example for you to 
understand. <clears throat> now, net present values may be increased. When do you increase this common sense? I hope you are sure. Net present values can be increased if you increase cash inflows. If you reduce the cash outflows, if you receive cash inflows earlier, and if you pay cash outflows later. Similarly, net present values can be decreased by decreasing the cash inflows, receiving the cash inflows later, increasing the cash outflows, and paying the cash outflows earlier. You can decrease it. You want to reduce your NPV. I mean, you don't want to, but it gets reduced if your cash inflows are increased or the cash outflows. So if the cash inflows are decreased and the cash outflows are increased, or you receive the cash inflows later, not in the earlier years, or you pay out the cash outflows early. Under the DCF methods of NPV and IRR, the discount rate is assumed. You assume that it is fixed throughout the project line. When you look at real options valuation, they, this assumes that the management is flexible, they can take decisions, they can modify some things in the project throughout the life of the project because they have certain options which they can exercise. For example, they might, after three years, they have the option to abandon the project. <clears throat> A real option is the flexibility to affect the amounts and risk of an investment project's cash flow to determine its duration or to postpone its implementation. A real option is ordinarily part of a strategic project and involves a real, real assets, not financial assets. We are talking of real assets here. Real assets means machinery, land, property, whatever. Real options reduce the risk of an investment project. See, we, we have started a project. It's supposed to be for 10 years. We assume once we've started, we have to go on for 10 years. But suppose I have an option of pulling out at year 5. To some extent, my risks are actually mitigated because I know that if something goes wrong, if I, I can, I can, I can uh, quantify what I want, if the outcomes are so and so, I, I, will, I can pull out, abandon the project at, at, at year 5 and therefore mitigate my losses. The moment I have options to exercise, it becomes more valuable. Yes or no? It reduces my risk. Risk of the project is reduced. <clears throat> the NPV approach ignores the fact that most investments can be delayed. And the option, the option I have to delay, the option I have to abandon, the option I have to change certain uh, parameters, that itself has value. So the value of an option, do you understand? is the difference between the project's NPV without the option and the NPV with the option. NPV with an option will be higher than an NPV without an option. Having an option increases the value of the project. Is it clear, students? Having an option increases the value of the project. Because why? Options help you to reduce the risk. The greater the availability of real options, and the uncertainty related to their exercise, the greater the worth of the project because increased uncertainty enhances the likelihood that an option will be exercised and therefore increases its value. Real options provide a framework for strategic decision making as the project goes along. So I have options. When you are computing NPV, what we've done traditionally, we are stuck with these cash inflows at this discount rate for this life. But that is not the case in the case of real options. And what is the value of the options? Remember, a project which has an option, the NPV of a project with an option will be higher than the NPV of the project without the option. Some of the examples you have option to abandon, option to expand, option to wait and learn. Now, the option to abandon, when there is an evaluation, continuous evaluation process, it reveals that the abandon, uh, abandonment value of a new or existing project exceeds the NPP of the project's future cash flow. So, there is a chance to abandon at a certain point. Similarly, we may have an option to expand. Right? 
A company is planning on introducing a new product and plans to make a very huge investment. Now, it is possible that instead of making the huge investment, they make a small plant and test how the market is going to be received in the, how the product is going to be received in the market. And then based on it, they can exercise the option to make the huge investment. So they may, they may, ex, that option to expand they have, they may or may not expand for what? Option to wait and learn. This is an option to postpone the project. This will permit the entity to undertake the project with greater information, with more preparation. But it foregoes earlier cash flows and the possible advantage of being first <clears throat> into the market. <clears throat> See, if you delay, of course, you lose earlier cash flows. You lose the entry into the market. But at the same time, uh, you are better prepared for it. Other real options include the flexibility option to vary inputs like uh, example by switching uh, fuels. So one kind of fuel you use another kind. Or you can vary the output depending on the economic conditions. You plan to make 100,000 units, you may make 120,000 or 150,000. Right? Or you may, the months falling, you shut down temporarily. The new product option, for example, the opportunity to sell a complementary or a next generation product even though the initial product is unprofitable. So I sell a product but it also has a complementary product. We may, we, may, <coughs> we may make a new product, we may introduce the product banking on being able to sell other complementary products along with it. So this product may be sold at a loss but it is the other complementary products will make up for that. Well, these are examples of a few 